What's going on guys? It's OmniArk and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about whether or not adults should be playing video games. Now I want to make a few disclaimers before I jump into the topic of this video. The first is that this video is going to be a little bit more of me just rambling, a little bit more of a discussion about this particular topic. Uh, so if you're one of my viewers who is really into just fast paced action, quick to the, to the point commentaries, then this video might not be for you because it might be a little bit longer and a little bit more abstract. Um, so just a, for, a for, fair warning right in the beginning. The second thing is that as always guys, I don't make anything off of most of these videos so if you wanted to show some quick support just drop a thumbs up on the video subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to help me fight the YouTube algorithm and finally this video is from the perspective of a US citizen that's me as just a guy who lives in America in the United States um, so that's kind of the lens with which I'm attacking this question now really the question should adults play video games is really more a part of a broader um, discussion that we're going to jump into in this video um and you can kind of take video games out of the equation and say you know should adults be into cartoons or anime or you know children's books or things like that where you know it's it's not really uh the the hobby itself seems to be um mainly for kids at least our society again from the perspective of a u.s citizen uh seems to deem these hobbies as more childlike and because of that i think a lot of these hobbies like playing games watching anime they they're for a lot of people more embarrassing to admit than other hobbies right like um for example you know if you were to meet a somebody who appears to be very successful right a guy comes up to you he's you know in a full suit he's very confident he's very you know tall and rich and what whatever you would uh deem to be hyper successful you know he comes up he introduces himself he tells you a little bit about himself and then it's your turn to share what your hobbies are the first thing that you reveal to this guy might not be that you spend Saturdays sitting on the couch eating cereal watching anime, right? Um, and that's just, you know, that's something that I notice is that some hobbies um, appear to be a little bit more embarrassing to to kind of own and, and you might feel a little bit ashamed about some of the things that you actually love to do and that's why I'm making this video because obviously you know this video I've actually done some research um, for this video and I put a lot of time into it and I've been wanting to make this video since I made that video talking about whether video games are a waste of time and if you guys haven't seen that I'll post a little bubble up here somewhere um, that'll link you over there you can watch it when we're done here but I've wanted to make this video for a long time and obviously if I've put this much time and effort into a video topic then it, it obviously is something personal to me right and obviously a lot of my friends and family pretty much everybody in my personal life knows that I have a YouTube channel and I stream and all that stuff um, but it doesn't really you know solve the problem of, of feeling sometimes a little bit insecure about my favorite hobbies about playing video games and things like that and you know the logical answer to should adults play video games is just who gives a shit if you love doing it just do it right that's the logical answer I think everybody can kind of agree that you know if you're not harming anybody and you're not breaking the law or whatever whatever your hobbies are then you should be fine doing those hobbies you should be cool with doing it um, and who cares what other people think if they're gonna judge you then they're probably not someone you're really gonna be friends with anyway and I would agree with that opinion on this topic and I think that that's the right answer but that's the right logical answer and I don't really feel that way sometimes right like if we're talking about logic versus feeling they usually go together like oil and vinegar like they don't really mix too well um because you know you could say yeah well you know just um you know just say you know screw the people who are judging you for loving you know being a furry or whatever uh and just do what you love to do right um but sometimes you don't feel that way you you still feel bad about doing it you still feel like maybe you know maybe i'm wasting my time maybe this is for kids maybe whatever the case might be right so even though that that kind of is like the easy answer that's like the tldr i wanted to make this video because i think it goes way deeper than that now the first thing i want to talk about is that a lot of these hobbies like gaming and anime and cartoons they're seen as kid hobbies even though 
a lot of games and shows and animes are way too complex for children to understand or even enjoy right if you take a game like dark souls or an anime like attack on titan or death note those are all things that are either way too difficult for a child to understand or just traumatic like if you showed an eight-year-old attack on titan the first episode even they'd be scared to death right so you know it's obvious that these aren't just for kids it's clear right um and on top of that all of these video games and all of these shows and all these animes and things like that are, are made by adults right the creators themselves are adults so clearly the you know these these have to impact some adults to some degree because they're the ones actually making the content so with that being said it's it's kind of interesting to to you know notice or to just take note of the fact that our i guess our society again as a as a um person who lives in the united states sees these things as more for kids even though it's clear that the subject matter isn't always for children and of course there are exceptions but for the most part um there are a lot that aren't so what really separates these hobbies from you know being kid hobbies from a more respectable hobby like maybe going to the gym or learning how to cook or something like that right those hobbies are things that you wouldn't mind telling anybody anybody who asks you hey what are you doing today and you know if you're just you know cooking your favorite dish and you love cooking like you're totally okay with admitting that that's your passion right nobody really questions you when you say oh i love going to the gym right no one says why do you love going to the gym like everybody just gets that and i think that's the distinction of of you know a kid a kid hobby um from a a respectable hobby and, and, and that comes down to reality versus fiction, right? That's really the biggest thing. The utility and the value of a respectable hobby is self-evident and obvious. You know, you can understand those things at face value. Anybody can understand why you're going to the gym. Anybody can understand wanting to be good at cooking. It doesn't take any sort of, you know, mental energy to figure out why would someone like that it's obvious right it's just embedded in our biology the utility of a more fictional experience no matter what medium it is whether it's video games or cartoons or whatever is more niche and not everybody is going to understand the value of a particular fictional experience to any other individual so we have hobbies that are based on our current existence right which is just working out learning to cook things like that and we have these hobbies that are based more on experiencing a fictional story um and what i think is interesting is that you know the the ones that are based on our actual reality and our experience are are understood by pretty much everybody but on a more shallow level right like you understand you go to the gym because you want to be healthier like that's pretty black and white but i think fiction works of fiction uh they don't really impact everybody right like somebody could read harry potter and gain nothing out of it right um i think a lot of people do um or even star wars or things like that right Th you know, things with passionate fan bases these works of fiction aren't for everybody but it impacts the people that it is for on a much deeper level than just the face value that you get from something like going to the gym or um you know or learning to cook and though not to say that they are more valuable um obviously it's good to take care of yourself and cook and you can find enjoyment of those things but i think that that's one of the differences is that in order for it to impact on an individual level more deeply it has to by nature exclude people who just aren't going to get it um, and it's not like it's trying to do that it's just in order to impact an individual on an experience like in an experience that they will really resonate with it has to kind of be more niche to that audience and i think the amount of people that are impacted by a particular fictional story like let's say the story of star wars for example is a testament to its success at portraying values morals and key patterns of our human experience right because that's really what a fictional story is doing it's not just telling you random stuff with random characters so we could say yes non-fiction is real and fiction isn't true right it's just not true these things didn't actually happen um there's their stories these fictional stories are still incredibly impactful works um and we can look at you know people like shakespeare 
they their work is grips multiple generations way after they're already long gone right like these fictional stories like hamlet still impact people all the time right all the time people are still reading that book years after right some fairy tales can be dated and tracked back like 10,000 years they really can in in the same form right so if we look at fictional stories and we say well you know they're not really that valuable um because they're not true uh well why are they lasting so long right why how could a fairy tale last 10,000 years if there's no value in that story why would people continue to tell it well the answer is that maybe fiction is true in the same way that like numbers are true right like you can't just have a number there's uh, numbers are a concept right so maybe fiction is true in that way in, in that you know numbers are an abstraction of our reality our underlying reality that we are experiencing but that doesn't necessarily make them fake right no one's gonna say that numbers and data are fake because they're so powerful and and they affect our daily lives so strongly sometimes numbers are even more true than reality right like you could literally feel fine go to the doctor they take blood work they run some numbers and they say hey look you have an enlarged such and such you probably have cancer and then they find out that it's true even though you feel fine right if you feel fine your reality is that it everything's okay but the data suggests that you probably have a really powerful illness that's affecting your body just based on the numbers and we can use numbers to figure that out so in the same way that numbers are an abstraction of our reality fiction is also that except with other forms of our experience so fiction can tell the story that a vast majority of people might need to hear but it can also simultaneously relate to individual people despite their differences it can affect people that are you know the same story can have an impact on someone who's 80 years old somebody who's 15 years old somebody who's seven years old and people who speak different languages and are in different countries you know they could all watch maybe a silent film and they could all leave having a different impact uh, of that film on their life and so that's the utility of a fictional story is that it attempts to make it easier to understand those key patterns of our chaotic existence right our our day-to-day -day life we're just going through life and it's very you know we're trying to make sense of why we're here what we're doing like what should we be doing should we be doing this or that you know fiction these stories kind of take lessons that we over generations have learned as a species and kind of packs it into an entertaining way to deliver that information in a way that a lot of people can resonate with and it's done in maybe it's done in a magical fantasy world or a medieval high fantasy setting or you know with certain characters that you know maybe have powers or can you know breathe fire or whatever um but the reason that it takes it to those extremes is because it affects our imagination it's way more gripping to to imagine things that way and still be able to walk away with you know a very um, good understanding of the moral lesson that you were supposed to take away from that piece of fiction and it could be more than one thing and it could impact you differently from somebody else but still the idea remains that the purpose of fiction is to take this infinitely complex reality and try to have us understand certain key things that people have figured out are important and deliver it to us in maybe an entertaining way. And because it's entertaining, we're more likely to consume that type of content and actually learn something. And I know it seems like I went way off on a tangent there, but I'm going to tie it back together and say all of the importance of fiction that I just described can now be extended to the works of fiction that we consider childish like video games or anime or cartoons you know video games books like harry potter anime they all contain stories and experiences that can impact varying groups of people on a level so deep that it goes beyond the logical comprehension right and that's what we were talking about before you logically as an adult shouldn't feel bad about playing video games because if you know 
you enjoyed and you're not harming anybody who gives a shit what other people think right that's logic but the impact that these stories actually have on you as an individual go way deeper than just logic right you'll have an emotional attachment to some of these characters and stories for years and this is why when you ask somebody why do you like star wars sometimes they might not immediately be able to tell you why right like they could say oh like i like the sci-fi setting but that doesn't really differentiate it from something like star trek that much right don't kill me um but right they have you know this a similar setting in, in outer space and whatever um same thing with you know with video games you could say well why do you love pokemon why don't you love digimon right like you, there's a difference right because it's that particular story that has had an impact on somebody on a level that it goes beyond their their actual rational thinking they don't even realize why they love something so much because they've loved it for so long and it gripped them initially because of the story that it was telling them and they've carried that with them to this day this is why it's okay for adults to like hobbies that might be deemed childish by our society you know you shouldn't doubt your interests or be ashamed of them just because society might have a specific um you know path paved for you as a you know uh 30 year old male who lives in you know wherever uh it, it it doesn't matter you don't have to align with that um and you shouldn't feel embarrassed for the things that you love to do because there's nothing wrong with them right you know and the reason that you might feel that there's something wrong with them is because you don't really align with maybe what you think other people like right but the reality is there's always going to be someone who likes some of the things that you do if you're 35 and you love harry potter you're not the only one you know if you're 24 and you love pokemon you're not the only one and if you're 48 and there's a particular anime that you love let's say it's naruto or bleach you're probably not the only one uh, but you know obviously it's not it probably not the norm you don't always see that but what is the norm who cares it, it really comes down to what has an impact on you specifically and that's why it's okay right that's why it's okay because you're having these experiences that have an impact on you that go way beyond anything else and you shouldn't feel bad about that fictional stories are incredibly important no matter how you are consuming them whether it's video games or tv shows or whatever the case is and if you found some that really resonate with you then that's good that's a good thing you really should embrace that uh, and you shouldn't feel bad about it because it's probably teaching you or has already taught you lessons that are important for you to know and develop as a person and be an individual in the society of people with that being said guys thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this long video um, if you did make it all the way here I would love for you to comment down below telling me what you think about this topic what do you think about what I've said and do you differ or do you agree or whatever the case might be also if you made it this far hopefully I've earned a thumbs up and a subscription um, and if you guys want you can follow me on all my social media links in the description below and I also have a discord channel down there where you can join and say hi to me and the people there and we can share memes and things like that and it's great also in the comments let me know if I should make more videos like this one this one is a bit more of a discussion a bit more abstract it's not just what's the best gun in Call of Duty so if you guys liked this make sure to let me know in the comments so I know that I should make more and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace